All right. Um, yeah, so I think I'm ready to just jump right into this. Dig We've already right seen in. a bit of Hurricane Ori, so I don't have too much to add on from before. It's really going to be a matter of seeing if these two bring any adaptations into the set from last time. <coughs> we got Puddle at Ledge here. And, and that's dust. Wow, just immediately off the Wackum. That was good. Off the Wackum? Ops. <laughs> what? <laughs> never mind. Just off. You never ops to like does. I don't know. I can't talk. <laughs> I don't know why I do this. <laughs> but either way, just explosive. Just an explosive first stock from Kraken in general. Yeah. I need Doctor who's kind of playing like getting a lot of chip damage right here. Uh huh. And chip damage does lead to death eventually. Mm -hmm. That's a very good catch with the charge up strong, the team up up strong. Yeah. I think both these characters are kind of interesting because at least with you know Puddle Four uh the range on both their up strongs is way better than most other characters. Mm hmm. So like both of these characters can just like have the potential to murder each other so well. Yeah. Especially with how the, these two players like to like land their kills vertically, because that's something I always do against Orkane. I know that he's harder to kill off the sides, so I just like want to kill him off the top, and make my life easier, you know. Down smash is so hard to DI. Yeah, and I think Doctor Who almost did it right, right there. I call it the illusion of choice. <laughs> the illusion of choice, exactly. Yeah. What's that? You uh, held hard one way or the other. Well, uh, you might just die off the side. Uh, you hold up, you die. Uh, <laughs> you hold up and in. Well, uh, now the Orcane is going to up air you and kill you. Yeah. The illusion of choice. It's tough. I, mean, I think one of the hardest things about it is, like, you can usually get away with uh, DIing down, <coughs> but being prepared for a frame 7 move with DI that's only on, like, half a dozen moves is not yeah. an easy task. It's, it's pretty demanding, actually. So I think that's that's one of the worst parts about the move, is just the sort of niche aspects. It's niche and it's fast. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel the same way. It's kind of like... I think, like, Maple Affair and Edelus Affair are kind of like that, too, where it's, like, a really niche angle, but those moves are relatively slow, especially up air. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's like, yeah. what do you mean I have to not DI this move? Yeah. That's that's always the hardest for me, just, oh, hey, just stop DIing. What do you mean, stop DIing? <laughs> it's like, there's gotta be something better. All right, though. Taking them back to Julesville from the first time they played. Yeah, I believe their, their last set course. started here. Yeah. I think Kraken won game one of that set. Mm hmm Which, assuming I, my memory is right on that, is actually kind of interesting that Dr. Who would come back here. I'm definitely wondering how he feels about the stage. But just something he likes. It's interesting seeing a lot of neutral picks later on in sets. Yeah. Like within sets. That's almost the thing I've just been getting used to in recess in general is a lot of people will fall back on their neutral stages, neutral their jewel mm -hmm. spells, and their towers. I really like counterfix stages for the most part. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are neutral stages I go back to, but. It's like they're neutral stages, but sometimes the neutral stage is more neutral for you than it is for them, you know? Mm, I guess so, yeah. It's like... Ethereal Gates. That's a neutral stage pick. But if your opponent's Forest Burn, you don't want to take them there, because Forest Burn is really good in that yeah, stage. Yeah, like Forest Burn or, like, Crag. Mm-hmm. 
I do think that's probably the most polarized neutral stage. But even then, like, I think there are a handful of characters. Like, I think Sylv's pretty mediocre on Tower, uh, Sylv and Ellie. We just need to, uh, make Rockwall a starter again. Oh, so true. We just talked about the stage that whole time. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, either way, it does work out for Doctor Who, whether or not it did last time, because again, I still don't remember. But, uh, time yeah. it was, it was cracking up that one on Jewelsville. Was this a nighttime? It's nighttime for yeah. I should just add a new stage mod every week. Mm -hmm. Just mess with people. Keep it fresh. Exactly. But yeah, uh -oh. uh, what was I gonna say about this? I had something I was gonna say. But yeah, more neutral stages. <laughs> I love neutral stages. Oh, wow. And then one thing that's always interesting about people, people picking Merchant is seeing how much they're able to take advantage of those top plots. Because mm -hmm. you know, at least for me, the top plots kind of ruin the stage. Yeah. Um, there's still ways to make use of them, but I usually find them more annoying than anything else. Me, as a Sylph player, I like to use the top ones as a sort of trap, because I know my up strong can land can hit people there, so if they get a bit too comfortable, I just use up strong and sometimes they die. Yeah. At least I never really go here as Claire, and for Ellie I always see it as a place to retreat to. But I don't think that would really work for either of these characters. Maybe Ori. I could see it if like Ori goes super high. I think those plots would be a really nice spot to um edge cancel off of. But we haven't really seen Doctor Who do that too much, I don't think. Again, the down strong. I wonder if there's any of these down strongs <laughs> where that could be replaced by up tilts. Because I think Ori up tilts a pretty good end here. You know what that made me realize? Doctor Who doesn't use a lot of tilts. Yeah. That's also true. Like, there, that could have been like a down tilt or like an up tilt or like a forward tilt even. Yeah. Because, like, down tilt... Not down tilt. Down tilt's yeah. kind of mediocre. Uh, but... Jab and F tilt are definitely normally, like, some of the backbones of Ori's combo game. Mm -hmm. And we don't see a whole lot of that from r which is interesting. We're just, like, up tilt is also a really good anti-air for yeah. uh, Ori. Because it's, like... We don't want Ori to have a lot of disjoint, but, like, up tilt is still kind of disjoint. That's reasonably enough. Something that I think is important to keep in mind is that could be a really nice tool for kind of increasing the way you combo on the ground. Mm -hmm. Because Doctor Who's decent at comboing in the air. Ooh. Is gonna be living off of that. Oh nice edge cancel. Okay. You got one. I mentioned that earlier, that I don't know if Doctor Who uses that at all. So it's always good to see that come out. It's a really nice tack. Trying to pull it back. Yeah. But yeah, Doctor Who seems to do tilts off of jab. But never doing tilts off on their own. It's usually dash attack or down smash. Ah, uh, yeah. Generally just something you need to uh, mess around with your neutral then. Just spending more time actively looking for other moves than there's. Oh boy, FD again. Mm-hmm. Right here. Specifically the tutorial grid version. <clears throat> Imagine picking the tutorial grid version and not taunting after a kill ever. Hmm. SMH. It's so funny SMH. when Shovel Knight like automatically gets it. Yeah. This is like taunting as part of your game plan, so. You just get to do a bit of trolling and improving. Yeah. Alright, though. One thing I actually do want to focus on, because I know 
Dr. Who mentioned it earlier in chat is I want to see what Kraken's bubble usage like is on the stage. Mm hmm. Ooh, belly flop. Oh, wow. That's unfortunate, DI. Super dangerous need to get hit by. Hi. I think it's pretty smart. Let's see. If there's anything to actually take away from this uh, Dr. Who, it's that you should try and sub out your usage of down smash with something else. I don't know exactly what is better in most of these circumstances, but it's just. A lot of people consider, consider Ori down smash to be one of Ori's few bad moves, so right. even at high percent, it really doesn't kill and it doesn't really set up into any big kill confirms either. So maybe just at high percents doing an up tilt to catch their recovery and then trying to follow them with a back, uh, back air or an up air, try and catch their bad DI. Yeah, I think most of the time Ori down strong is kind of like a training wheels kind of move. Mm-hmm. Or if you're not confident in your ability, especially with sign usage, because that's usually kind of what it's replacing. Mm -hmm. That's not bad, you know, you can get a free 18%. But... Yeah, it does good damage. But there's still other stuff you could be doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and yeah, just being super cautious right here. Yeah, and another thing is to be more confident when, like, you... It's not even a confidence thing, it's you should be more conscientious of your opponent's resources, because right there, Orcane didn't have an, a double jump, an air dodge, or a puddle, and you still just let him do the hitboxless, hurtbox expanding up B with no puddle, and you just didn't do anything from it. Right. Also, bracket reset. Bracket reset. Hell yeah. Let's go, Brands. Dead ass finals time. Let's just jump right here into uh, game five on Forest Floor. <clears throat> it's definitely my favorite starter. It feels a little bit Orcane favored. I feel like Forest Floor is the most neutral of neutral pick stages. Thing. Yeah, because like, sure, some characters like benefit from it a bit more than others, but with like them liking to kill off the top and it having a relatively short ceiling. But like, is there any character who actively suffers from the stage? I guess not. There's just some character that I think are like really good on it, and some that I think are mm -hmm. just mediocre. I'd say it's between this <clears throat> and Jules Fail, personally. Yeah, this and Jules Will. And wow, the up air is... Nice follow up. Yeah. Oh, that's rough from Kraken. Unfortunately, Doctor Who not able to get much of a big punish. It was a start. Yeah. I think we're starting to see some situations here where... Weave dash job would be really good to go for. There's generally a lot more you can do off of that. Down shot up below the plot. Right. Yeah. Could have been that strong, for sure. Mm, probably, yeah. Still able to catch. But still get the kill. Very nice. Yeah. Not a bad catch at all. As long as you can play responsibly with your life lead. There you go. Start something new. Uh oh. Oh, wow, down strong. I don't think the the delayed neutral air was wrong in that situation. I just feel like cracking up was just prepared for it. Yeah. Oh, that was an interesting up the air spectrum. Mm hmm. Let's see. Anyone's 
again, just very rinse repeat. Super simple edge guards right here, but it does pay off. Kraken isn't able to get the height without the puddle. Game one. That's kind of unfortunate. But yeah, we'll see here. Uh, going into game two, we're going back to Abyss. This time, real Abyss. This time, Kraken Up is the one choosing it. And that too, yeah. It's weird how both of these players pick it, pick Abyss against each other. I guess that kind of... Like, I know it's still a counter pick, but... In like this player-to-player -player matchup, it's kind of a neutral pick. Where it's like we both want to take the other person here. Right. For different reasons. Possible. I think we did see this work out in Doctor Who's favor last time. Unless it was just... Also, it's a different mm -hmm. set. And I'm missing these two up with other people, but... Oh. 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 Okay. Going for the wonkiest of wonk here. The wonky uppies. It's very nice, it's very... Yeah. It's not like... Uh oh. Ooh, yeah. Cause like, sometimes bad... I'm not gonna say that that uppie was a good decision. It's just a bad decision that worked out. Hmm. But very fun nonetheless. Sometimes it's what you gotta go for, it's bad decisions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes bad decisions work out. Sometimes, yeah. Doesn't make them any better of decisions, but like, they work out. It's a mix-up. Jab, jab. And... Ooh. Yeah, I like the use of reopen that Doctor Who has. Mm -hmm. Kind of using the situations where, like, Kraken's right above them. That, yeah, that's just gonna galaxy. That's unfortunate. That's dead. Mm -hmm. Oh, he is dead. so light. And there we go, answering immediately back. Yeah, I think that's been happening a lot in this set. Is like Kraken stays one step ahead, but Doctor Who isn't far behind a lot of the time. Mm hmm. Uh, Doctor Who, if you need advice for parrying bubbles, uh, the best advice I can give you is just uh, keep your eye on one bubble and try to parry that. It really, it's helped me with consistency a lot. Just sort of narrow it down exactly what it is you're trying to parry. Mm -hmm. Big move, big. Yeah, it's important to parry it if they're throwing out a lot. I don't think Kraken does it too, too often, but there are some times where it's parryable here and there. And doesn't Ori have a fairly good sliding parry? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so that's also a good option to have in your in your repertoire. Your bag of tricks. Doctor Who, I will also try to teach you the side parry and call you an idiot if you think you need help again. <laughs> I promise it's, it's hard, but I think a lot of the difficulty is, is character dependent. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Ori should be pretty middle of the road in terms of difficulty. Yeah. Or like the catch right there. And if not, being able to like slide parry it, if you are getting hit by it a lot, you should also learn what to do when you do get hit by it, because they made it easier to SDI. And that's a pretty big bonus for everyone. Yeah. That hit. It didn't kill, but <laughs> even on like the worst possible DI. Yeah. That's unfortunate. It's a slightly rough game here. Iron's starting to get that orcane damage. Oh, barely not hitting the team up up strong. I will say, I don't- there's one bit of advice thinking of Kraken. I normally honestly don't have that much to add for the uh, for him. Mm -hmm. I think his aerial combo game could use a little bit of work. 
Like the way he uses stuff like there and there, especially. Mm -hmm. um, those are two really good tools. Could also say more jab for Kraken as well, because Hurricane Jab is unreasonably untackable. good. It's untackable, and you can just jab, jab, down tilt, jab, jab, down tilt, imagination. Or jab, jab, okay. F tilt, to set up an edge guard. Mm -hmm. Is Doctor Who gonna be able to get this quick kill again? Or at least not take too much extra credit? Something else that's really good for Orkane is Nair Bounce. Um, yeah. Can't believe they just took the Abyss Rune and made it real. <laughs> that's a very good point, yeah. Oh, Overall Ooh, wow. That's, that's dead. That's super dead. It's kind of crazy how good some of Warkane's moves are. And by some, I mean basically mm -hmm. all of them. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. They just, they just gave all this guy. This kid's gave. You know what? Fine, I guess I won't talk. <laughs> Bless child. I was going to say they just gave this character everything they could ever ask for. And more. Also, interesting pick going to Spirit Tree. Oh, yeah. Because, like... Maybe it's a home field advantage type deal. Maybe. Where it's like, ah, yes, this is my character's home stage. Actually, it's never like that in Rivals you know Activity. What? You know what, though? That... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a little morale boost. I guess... I don't know, I think a lot of the time I really tunnel vision on the ceiling of the stage. Mm -hmm. It's obviously like lowest ceiling in the game, pretty funny statistic. But yeah. uh the tides are also really small, and that is gonna be benefiting Ori, because it kinda gives you less room to escape bash. Mm -hmm. And like Doctor doesn't go for that many bashes, but he does go for enough that that's always gonna be an active throughout this game. Yeah, it's like you don't have to go for it every time, but you have to go for it enough. To be threatening, it's like, ah oh, yes, remember, I can do this. Yeah. Yeah, I just went around here. I don't think the use of Sign Orb for ledge chopping is the worst. Or like Light Orb, but again, Sign is always there. <laughs> yeah, so like, Ori! Ori has a really hard time closing stocks if they DI properly, but there's a, Ori has a lot of ways of kind of forcing bad DI. Mm -hmm. Cause stuff like Bash and Up Air are really good if they DI in or even DI out too early for some aerials. But if you're able to uh, thread the needle properly, yeah, it doesn't have too many options. Ooh. I feel like that was techable. No, it's a bit too far away. I think. All right. Yeah. This counter pick has really worked out well. Yeah. I think that's also why he uh, took Crack into the stage, just having more options for Uppy and recovering. Just hmm. what's something that's been killing him a lot? Just random run up, like puddle F strong, and on the stage, it's like at the perfect height to where that just doesn't hit you. I guess so, yeah. Uh, uh, no down strong. And just barely missing that. Oh, I thought you were gonna see an uppy right there, but. <laughs> Bubble butt. Bubble butt galaxy instead. Neat. Oh, uh, I should've just gone for it. Let her rip. Yeah. Alright. Now we're in a game at nine grands. Last possible game here. Uh, after the first set. Mm -hmm. So they're taking it down to the wire. Super... I think, like I said, I think these two flyers could definitely make some good progress in main bracket if they're able to just push a little bit further. We got a few kinks in their gameplay. Mm hmm. 
it's all about improvement. It doesn't necessarily have to be big improvements, it can be just a few small things. Jumped clean over him with that four there. Oh, here we go. Up there is and goes for a bash. You know what? That was seven. That was really good. That was good drift on Kraken's part. Yeah. I honestly, like, was feeling another up there. I don't know if it would have hit, but it was probably mm -hmm. the right option. A but... lot safer than bash. Yeah, you're right. It was sevens for that. I respect the attempt. Especially in, like, game nine grands. Mm -hmm. There, oh, there's the thing we mentioned earlier. The reverse bubble butt. Yeah. Bubble butt kind of a good move. Only kinda. Uh -oh. Okay. Yeah, you need a side B. And Doctor Who is decent at punishing that, at least at that angle. Mm hmm. Oops. There's no double jump right here. <gasps> You're dead for that! Oh no. That was a really good catch with the puddle up strong, just recognizing he likes to recover high, maybe a bit too high. Hit him with the very tip of up strong. Yeah. No, that was a ser that was a good catch. Doctor Who's doing a good job racking up damage right now though, keeping himself in the game as best he can. I think the inability to parry bubbles is kind of going to be a big hurdle to climb, though. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if Kraken wants to, he can just sort of start playing slower, throw out a bunch of bubbles. And even if you can't parry bubbles, your character probably has another, another way around bubbles. Yeah. It's like, I can't parry bubbles. I can't do it to save my life. <laughs> but as a Sylvanas player, I just swat them away forward. <laughs> Order. No. Right. Another up it. Another up strong. <laughs> That's so unfortunate. Just jumps into it. Oh. And yeah, cracking up is gonna be your novice bracket champion.